Another stormy night comes to an end across central and eastern Kentucky, but the severe weather threat returns for Thursday. I've got the very latest coming up. Breaking news in Madison County tonight. Police say a man was found dead. Four teenagers tell us how they rushed to help when a tree fell in a family's tent during a storm in Powell County. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good evening to you. It has been another stormy night across the bluegrass and a first alert severe weather day continues. Rounds of storms have been moving across the state. A strong storm moved across Lexington about 8 o'clock tonight. As you can see in this time lapse video from our sky cam, dark clouds and lightning covering the sky. We begin tonight with our chief meteorologist, Chris Bailey. He's showing us what he's tracking right now on the first alert defender. Chris? It's really been the calling card for these thunderstorms over the past several hours. Just absolutely loaded with three things. Lightning, obviously, some heavy rain, and pea sized hail. Getting a lot of those small hail reports over the past little bit. You notice, though, a drying trend showing up here on Live First Alert Defender the farther west that we go from Interstate 75. Certainly some good news, though. One little round of some thunderstorms still kicking up uh, a little bit of a fuss here from Owingsville, Carlisle, Nicholas County, back toward the southwest into extreme eastern parts of Fayette County. Getting a lot of small hail reports from these storms around Sharpsburg into Bath County. And again, the thunder. And lightning from Carlisle, although most of the action is just to our south. That extends back toward the southwest. Paris, it is grazing us just to the south. North Middletown will get in on some of that. Lexington seeing the drier skies beginning to press on in from the southwest. One more little shower that is beginning to weaken west of Danville across sections of Perryville. Earlier rounds of showers and storms still into far eastern Kentucky with a lot of noise here. The heavy rains slowly but surely beginning to shut off as this whole mess works its way from west to east. And that's a trend we're going to watch for as we go into later tonight. Bigger complex of thunderstorms earlier around St. Louis beginning to run out of a little steam. So chances are we're going to make it through the overnight with a mainly dry sky where you live. I make no such promise as we go into your Thursday. Guys, when I come back in a little bit, we're going to track what may be an increasing, believe it or not, threat for severe weather late tomorrow into tomorrow night. Chris, thank you. We're also tracking a breaking news alert in Madison County tonight. Police are telling us tonight that some people found a man's body in a creek just below a lake. And now a death investigation is underway. State police say the body was pulled from the water near Will Green Lake just outside of Richmond just a few hours ago. Monique Blair talked to investigators tonight. She has the breaking details. Right before 7.30 tonight, Kentucky State Police received a call that some people canoeing in Silver Creek, just below Wilgreen Lake in Madison County, came across a dead adult man's body. Detectives responded to the scene, and they actually just uh, removed that, that body uh, from the creek. Kentucky State Police Trooper Robert Purdy says right now police don't know how long the body was in the water. It doesn't look like it just you know, showed up here this afternoon. Uh, there's a chance that it may have been in this area for a little while. Trooper Purdy says the man has not been identified, and right now this is being considered a death investigation, while all the details of what may have happened are worked out. As we continue on and we can learn exactly what happened and, and, and what kind of injuries, if he had any injuries, what may have caused his death, uh, that'll be what actually takes the course of our investigation. Trooper Purdy says the man's body is being taken to the medical examiner's office in Frankfurt for an autopsy. In Madison County, Monique Blair, WKYT. A family trip took a tragic turn. As we first told you last Friday, strong winds knocked a tree onto a tent in Powell County, killing a mother and badly injuring a father. Four teenagers camping nearby tell us they rushed to help and did what they could for that family. Garrett Weimer talked to the teenagers tonight. At 3 a.m., the rain woke them up. What happened next changed them. Once I got over there, all I saw was, you know, the tree and then some of the tent poles sticking up where they had been bent over. Brennan Ball, Hannah Khan, Courtney Cox, and Caleb Garrison were the only campers nearby when a fallen tree crushed a tent near Natural Bridge State Park. A uh, tree was falling on the tent. Uh, the mother of the family has been hurt. Okay, did you say there was a tree that fell on a child? Uh, no, on the mother of the family. The boys got the tree off the tent. Kathy Carlson was killed, her husband badly injured. Their three kids weren't hurt, so these teens stayed with them while they waited at the hospital. 
really absolutely amazed by how strong they were. Yeah. I can't imagine going through anything like that. I really care about those boys. I don't, I mean, I don't want to see them hurting or anything. The teens say they were just doing what anyone else would have done in that situation. You can't complain about the fact that it's pouring rain and your feet are sloshy and gushy. You, you can't just be like, oh, there's blood. I, I can't touch it. I'm afraid. You have to be there and you have to actually help or else nothing's going to get accomplished. After all, they were the only ones there who could help. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Now, just yesterday, Brian Carlson, the father, was upgraded from critical to serious condition at UK Hospital. Large hail from a storm in Johnson County caused some damage this afternoon. The hail cracked a window in the library of Flat Gap Elementary, so school leaders dismissed classes 20 minutes early today. Some people around Johnson County also reported damage to their cars. No injuries were reported because of the storm. The National Weather Service says a storm that moved through Madison County last night dropped two tornadoes. Meteorologists surveyed damage south of Richmond today. They say an EF0 tornado with winds up to 85 miles per hour ripped a mobile home off its foundation, then damaged the roof and a porch of another home. People inside the mobile home told meteorologist Jim Caldwell it was frightening. So when I got up and went to the door, about that time my husband came into the kitchen. And he said, that's a tornado. And I said, yeah. By that time, we felt the trailer shake a little bit and all of a sudden slid right off. The National Weather Service says a second tornado and EF1 touched down in a more isolated part of Madison County. No injuries were reported in either tornado. Volunteers pitched in today to help flood victims in Bourbon County. Stoner Creek flooded during heavy rain last Friday, damaging about 20 homes nearby. Today, the American Red Cross brought in two trucks filled with the special equipment and cleanup kits to help flood victims. And volunteers with the Southern Baptist Convention Disaster Relief Group also helped. But flood victims say they still have a long road to recovery. And it's just empty. It's like when I first moved in. 30, I've been here 31 years. This has never happened, 31 years. Volunteers say they'll continue helping flood victims in Bourbon County at least until Saturday. And we can help you track storms even if you're away from your TV. On WKYT.com, you can use the first alert defender to zoom into your neighborhood. You can also download the WKYT app for your iPad or smartphone. It will connect you to weather tools, including live radar. New tonight, state police say one of two escaped inmates from Wolf County is back in custody. Police say John Trent was arrested tonight in Powell County, but his cousin Dallas Trent is still on the run. The Trents were originally arrested on robbery charges, but two weeks ago, police say they jumped out of a transport van that was heading back to Wolf County from the Three Forks Regional Jail in Lee County. The search continues tonight in Lincoln County for a man investigators call dangerous. The Lincoln County Sheriff's Office is looking for James Blakey, who's wanted on felony warrants. Police say Blakey threatened them and refused to surrender before running off. The day of the search centered in some woods around Effius School Road. The sheriff told us there have been sightings of Blakey tonight, but at last check, he was still on the run. We are learning more tonight about the arrest Lexington police made during UK's run in the NCAA tournament. The UK spokesperson says only a small number of students were among the 69 people arrested. UK used its database to cross check the arrest. The university says only seven people arrested were actually students. Most of the people police arrested were charged with alcohol intoxication or disorderly conduct. Tonight, two school districts are questioning an article that claims a gay Eastern Kentucky high school basketball player was outed and harassed by an opposing team. The story about Dalton Maldonado appeared on the national blog Outsports.com last week. He plays for Betsy Lane High School in Floyd County. Maldonado claims in December players from Bryan Station High School harassed him during a game in Lexington and later chased him. School leaders in Fayette County and Floyd County say they didn't know about the alleged incident until the story appeared online. And the Bryan Station principal says the article has some inaccuracies. But school leaders are investigating. Lexington police say no official police report was ever made. Tonight, firefighters said it could be months before they can figure out what caused a massive fire at GE's appliance park in Louisville. That fire destroyed a large building at the complex last Friday. Firefighters say the fire is still smoldering. So far, they say they have not found anything that would make them think that the fire was arson related, but firefighters say it's still too early to speculate on a cause. Investigators say it could take GE three to six months to tear down what's left of the building. 
A grand jury has indicted a Clay County woman accused of causing the death of her husband. Amy Burkhardt faces a murder charge. She was arrested earlier this year. Police say she was supposed to be caring for her husband, Charles, who was paralyzed after a 2007 car crash. Instead, they say Charles died after being found dehydrated and malnourished. Tonight, we have learned no one will be charged for a bar fight involving two college football teams. Richmond police say the Madison County Grand Jury decided today not to indict anyone in connection to the fight. Many family members say EKU football player Colton Scurry was injured during the fight at Jersey's back in January. Police say the fight involves students and football players from both EKU and UK. Today, a jury convicted the man accused of being behind the deadly 2013 bombings of the Boston Marathon. Johar Sarnayev was found guilty of all 30 counts against him, including use of a weapon of mass destruction and conspiracy. The jury will now decide if he should receive the death penalty. His lawyers admitted he took part in the bombings, but claimed that his older brother, who's now dead, was the driving force behind the plan. More police body cameras could be coming to Lexington, and officers tell us it's a good idea. In its proposed budget, Mayor Jim Gray included money for new body cameras. Lexington police were already using a $160,000 grant to test out different brands and styles of body cameras. They say a few officers are wearing cameras now as a part of a pilot program. I think it aids in, in a lot of things, uh, mainly transparency, uh, evidence, uh, a, a whole myriad of things that it, it benefits in our ability to, to be better at what we do. And uh, technology is advancing in all professions, and certainly it is in law enforcement. Mayor Gray set aside about $600,000 in his proposed budget for the body cameras. The Urban County Council still has to approve the budget. Tonight, veteran CBS newsman Bob Schieffer announced he is retiring. Schieffer plans to step down as host of Face the Nation this summer. The 78-year-old made the announcement during a speech at his alma mater, Texas Christian University. Schieffer has been with CBS News since 1969. He hosted Face the Nation since 1991. He's been chief Washington correspondent since 1982. He also spent time as the host of the CBS mm -hmm. Evening News. Not only a really gr a great journalist, but a, a very good person. Yeah. Nice guy. Won't be the same without it him. It will that's not. For sure. We'll miss